My name is Kevin Kulik. I'm obviously with the Flight 3407 families. Uh, before we get started, the, the biggest thing I wanted to say, and I can't say this enough, is, uh, you know, we're, every one of us came on our own dime. You know, we try to get a pretty good group here every year in February around the anniversary, and you have a little more lead time. You have four weeks, six weeks, whatever it is. And this year we only had about 10 days. And in 10 days notice, we had 25 people to come from all over the place. You know, Gail and Cindy Saltzgiver came from Missouri on a moment's notice when they heard, you know, Senator Blunt was in the middle of this. So it's, it's just to me really remarkable. You know, typically when you look at a grassroots group like us, you know, what gets you is over time, you kind of lose your steam. It's hard to keep coming back. It's hard to keep coming back and having the same meetings. In over eight years, it's new members, it's new staffers, and they don't remember the crash like we do. So it's just really, to me, remarkable. And I, I hope this is a great image for anyone who might be thinking about uh, trying to water anything down or however they want to, you know, try to, you know, massage it. it, it whatever, however you sell it, it's the wrong thing. And it's really, a, you know, a, an injustice for all that this group has been through and what we've suffered through and how hard we fought. So we wanted to start out today with, well, first of all, obviously, I want to thank our members from the Western New York delegation. They've been with us every single step of the way. They're here every day, even when we can't. And obviously, we have a great pilot presence here. We have ALPA, we have APA, and then we have, you know, Jeff Skiles from the Miracle on the Hudson. Him and, you know, Sully are right there with us every step of the way, ready to lean in when we need them. So that, we can't say thank you enough. To me, what we wanted to start out today with is we want to bring up Summer West, 11 years old now? 10. 10. Okay, 10. All right, she was two. She lost her father. And then with her is Alex Safran. She was seven, and now she's 14, going to be 15, and she lost her mother. And at the seventh anniversary, you know, Alex read something, you know, from her heart about missing her mother. And then today, Summer's going to go, and she's going to start this off for us. So here you go. My name is Summer West. I am 10 years old. My daddy loved me very much, and I love him. He used to parade me around the house on his shoulder singing while I played the jingle bell stick. He used to take me to flower shops and drive me around on his John Deere. He loved that thing. We swam and played all the time. We loved going for ice cream. Every weekend, he would take me to Perkins restaurant for breakfast so my mom could sleep in. <laughs> we would always release the balloon they gave us and watch it go high in the sky until we couldn't see it anymore. It was our thing. Now I release balloons to my daddy in heaven with notes attached to it, hoping he will get them. That's my thing. My daddy was funny, kind, smart, and always protected me. But I couldn't protect him because I was only two years old when he was killed in a plane crash. But I can protect other daddies now and make sure my daddy's death wasn't all for nothing. I want the airlines to hire pilots that know what they are doing and have the best training they can get. Isn't their job to take care of everyone on the plane and make sure they don't die? Then why won't you want them to take shortcuts that could lead to crashes? Don't you know that lives are more important than money? If I were your baby, would you, would you put me on a plane with a pilot that in your heart you felt was not trained properly? Would you take that gamble with my life? My daddy didn't have a choice. You were in charge and you failed. I graduated from elementary school last week and my daddy wasn't there. I miss and love him so much. I was robbed of a life with my daddy and he was robbed of me. Please don't do that to your kids. We learn from you. Please teach us the right way. Keep the sky safe. Make my daddy proud. Thank you. Wow. <clears throat> I lost my little girl, Summer, so don't need to lose the daddy. <clears throat> Thanks, Brian. The Airline Safety Act, that's what we're all here for. All the delegates, ALPA, the families. The Airline Safety Act was signed into law August 1st, 2010. It's a date I'll never forget, because exactly one year to the day before, on August 1st, 2009, I buried my daughter, Ellie. The airlines fought us on every step of changing the law. They didn't want any changes to the existing training schedules, whether it be fatigue, qualification, hours for training. They fought us on every step. In fact, we, we watched their journals and periodicals and their, their conferences. 
they ridicule the law, the Airline Safety Act, and they call it the 1,500-hour rule in ridicule. These are some, some things I've read from them as they refer to the rule, that it was rushed, that it was ill-advised, that it was uninformed, that it was ridiculous, and it was an emotional response to the crash. So let's talk about the 1,500 hours. It's the Airline Safety Act, but they want to say 1,500 hours. Let's concentrate on that. First of all, 1,500 hours was the minimum competency standard for a captain decades before any of these families showed up here. It was the minimum competency standard for decades by the FAA. Rushed, the NTSB for 18 years was trying to get a training rule in place. That's not rushed. 18 years, it was on their top 10 list of things to get done. Ill-advised, the FHA did study after study, hearing after hearing. The Congress held hearings. Experts from NASA, from NTSB, from the FAA, from the pilots. It wasn't rushed. It wasn't ill-advised. They said it was emotional. I'll give them that. We came here. We're all emotional, but we're not unintelligent. We're not ill-advised. The airlines don't agree with the 1,500-hour rule. United doesn't agree. They want 12,000 hours for their pilots, 6,000 hours to get in the plane to fly it. American, I think, Jeff, you told me today, 12,000 hours for American? On the average, the, the majors don't agree with 1,500 hours. They want 12,000 hours. They want 6,000 hours. They want 4,000 hours. The airlines don't agree. They say it's not a minimum competency. We won't accept a pilot with that kind of skill level. But the regionals, they wanted to retain that. They wanted to fight us every step of the way. In fact, I remember when we, were, when we started this, they beat their chest and said, we trained the gold standard. We trained to the FAA regulations, the gold standard. The gold standard was 250 hours of training for an 18-year-old to fly that plane. That was their gold standard. All the congressmen are, are from Western New York. Do you know in Western New York, in New York State, 1,000 hours to get a license to cut hair? 1,000 hours. The gold standard was 250. I understand Senator Thune is introducing a bill, an amendment, to reduce some of the training regulations. In his state of South Dakota, <coughs> 2,100 hours to get a license to cut hair. I just had my hair cut. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I, I know it'll be okay. It'll grow back. I'm not so sure about a pilot crashing a plane. The gold standard, that's the old standard. That's the standard on which every 12 to 16 months, a plane load of Americans went down and crashed to the ground. That was their gold standard. That's the old standard. That's not a standard we accept. That's not a standard we passed. And we're here today to say, don't reduce the standard. We want one thing, a safe standard. That's what Congress is looking for, a safe standard, not the old standard. The standard where, for the last eight years, not a single life has been lost in a crash in America. Before that, there was roughly 500 lives lost. In 10 years, six crashes, all by the regionals. I remember Scott Mauer. I know where you are, Scott, right behind me. <laughs> <laughs> when, we were, when we started this, he said, the majors aren't crashing. They must be doing something right. What they're doing right is training their pilots, requiring more hours, more training, and more intensity on what, who's flying the plane. That's what the majors did. They haven't had a crash in about 20 years, 18 or 19, I'm not sure. The majors did it right. We did it right when we passed the law. This is the safety standard, and we're asking the Senate and the Congress to leave it alone, let it be, eight years, no accidents. Thank you. And I want to ask uh, Congresswoman Slaughter to come up. She has been wonderful for us. I remember, I don't know if you do, uh, they were doing the infamous Obamacare. You were in the Rules Committee. I knocked on the door. You came out and gave me a hug and said, what do you need, honey? We're behind you. That was eight and a half years ago. She's still with us. Congressman, thank you. Absolutely. In fact, I don't know of anything that probably I've done in my life that was as meaningful as what we all did together and the work that we did. The idea, that awful night, that none of us, I don't think anybody in western New York, if you were to even mention it to them, would not know all the details of it. The extraordinary people they were on that plane, every one of them, one of our citizens and one of our neighbors. And those two pilots had had so little training, they were flying into Buffalo in February, and they had had no winter experience. They knew nothing about ice or anything else. And inside of the airport in the runway, they crashed that plane. What stunned me in reading about them was they, they were so poorly paid, on top of being so poorly trained, that they had to sleep on the floor wherever they could find a place that they could not afford. I believe they were making $12,000 a year. Am I right about that? Do you all 17. remember? 17. And we worked really hard, but I will tell you why I'm, I'm so proud and why this means so much to me. 
I have never known people like these. I don't think anybody else in Congress has either. For eight years, they turned their grief and their loss into what can we do to help other people. And it's pointed out they come down here at their own expense. They are tireless about it. And we got some of the best legislation I think anybody ever had for training. We cannot let anybody back up on this. If it, for no other reason than I see your faces all the time and remember how long we've been at this and the fact that still to this day, all these years later, you are willing to put aside whatever you have to do and to come down for the benefit again of other people. I am so proud. I was so proud to represent you at that time. Uh, I, in my heart, I still do. Uh, and and I'm, I'm just delighted to be here with you all this morning and to throw down the gauntlet that what we work for so hard, we are not going to give up easy. We promise you that. So it was wonderful to see all of you back. Again, I thank you for your steadfastness and for your duty and that you see it to make sure that this doesn't happen again. You are extraordinary, wonderful people, and I love you. Take care. Thank you. I want to say that, uh, Summer, I, I really think you said everything that matters. And I would challenge any member of Congress meeting and talking to Summer to vote in a way that would dilute the training hours. It's training hours. It's a few extra dollars. You know, I'm a corporate guy, but at some point in time, you've got to draw a line in the sand. Pay your workers. And here's how competition works. If you don't pay them, you lose them. Now, I don't know if you heard the other travesty that's occurred, and it's the chief of staff to the uh, secretary of the Air Force. He has said the, he is losing pilots to the regional airlines. I'm like, really? How do you pay your Air Force pilots so poorly that you expect us to believe that as the chief of staff to the U.S. Air Force, you're actually losing pilots? to the regional airlines and you support diluting the room, shame on him. And I wrote him a letter just about using those words. Shame on him for not doing his job, not being able to do his job, to recruit and keep Air Force pilots, that he would in any way stand in the way of the public flying safely. That's all we're talking about. You know, there's certain things that, you can ha that can happen in life and you survive them. A plane crash is not one of them. So we stand here together, and I remember that very fateful night. Obviously, Mark, welcome, the current county executive. was That was my daughter's 16th birthday. We had just celebrated February 12, 2009, her 16th birthday, and that was a very happy day. And then the phone call came in. And, and that's something that any of us that were on that scene, is, is, it, it haunts you to think, and then later find out it was all pilot error. They tried to say it was icing, it was winter weather. It was none of those things. It was pure and simple, total uh, lack of training on, on that type of aircraft. You know, the, the, the pilot had failed his, his check ride at least four or five times. There's no database to say that. So what we did, what uh, Congresswoman Slaughter did back in 2010 was pass good common sense legislation. Common sense, that's all, to keep the public safe. And God bless the families here that, you know, more than once a year, more than twice a year, they're down here. They're not going to let their loved ones, uh, that tragedy that night, uh, go unanswered in a way that keeps the rest of us safe. And they have kept us safe and will continue to do so. So uh, we are all united. We may disagree politically on certain things. In fact, we do quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> but on certain things, this is one Senator Schumer and I agree on. And uh, you know, so I think as this moves forward in the House, uh, in our markup, uh, we're going to have to fight this in the Senate, and uh, you know I'm going to be making my my words known to the White House as well, and uh, I think we'll be able to to stop this this unconscionable action by Senator Thune, and uh, you're but being here in summer, this is the one you got to have talking front and center. <laughs> John, John, you are good. <laughs> we got how old are you? You're ten, so you're the star, so. Again, uh, that's enough said. I want to thank the press for being here. You got to report this. You've just got to get this out. Thank you very much.
Well, uh, thank you very much. I just want to, while Chris and Louise were talking, I remember that fateful night in February. I was talking to then Transportation Secretary Ray LaHood, and he said that they're sending the National Transportation Safety Board to Buffalo, to Clarence, to investigate the crash. He told me, he said, these guys are very, very good. And if they can't find the cause, they will find the probable cause. And the probable cause, the cause, was pilot error due to inexperience. So the logical extension of that, the logical response of that, the fact-based response to that, not an emotional one, is to enhance training so that, you know, I, these folks have even said it, that the, the, the pilots themselves were victims <laughs> because they were put in a cockpit that they really couldn't handle and they were responsible for a lot of lives. Now, I've read all the reports from the industry saying that um, these new regulations create a recruiting problem. That's not only not true, that's insulting. That's insulting to everybody here. Now, you look at this chart behind us and you look at the number of fatalities before this act of Congress, <laughs> pretty significant. And you look at the number of fatalities since, which would be zero. And I would remind all of you, as frustrating as it has been, Kevin and Karen and John and Marilyn and everybody else, um, you have made a major, major impact here. And if you look at American history, the environmental movement, the civil rights movement, the labor movement, the women's movement, they all have a common theme. Nothing comes from the top. It comes from the bottom up. And you today take your rightful place in that great, great tradition. So all of us as Americans, Republicans, Democrats, we have our county executive here, Mark Polencar is from Erie County, who wanted to be here with all of you. Um, we need to use this as a lesson uh, from which to address future challenges, but not until, not until this one is concluded and concluded in the right way. So I'm pleased to join you again. We honor your, your lost ones, and our hope is that they will continue to give you light uh, from the love that they gave you and the inspiration that they give you every day to be here and to remind us that we have an obligation uh, to the flying public in America. Thank you so much. Well, I never speak extensively uh, at this event. Uh, I come each and every year to stand with true heroes, true inspiring Americans that have committed from their grief safety for all of us. And so the reason I don't speak is because stories like Summers, John, the story of you and your loss, you guys are the message. And I remember vividly when we sat with John Boehner in a small restaurant up in Buffalo, he was brought to tears. Now, he cried quite often, but, <laughs> <laughs> but we knew when John cried, he was responding as a person, and he was committed to standing with us. And that is because you guys inspired him as you inspire us each and every day to put a line in the sand to tell folks, you mess with this, we will mess with you, and we will not back off because of these people here. Thanks. Well, thank you, uh, congressional members. Who, again, you've been with us uh, along the way, et cetera. But uh, wow, wow, it's, it's unconscionable that we're here again. And uh, you know, people, people come up to me and they say, well, Scott, haven't you moved on? No one here is ever going to move on. Acceptance is what we're, we're really dealing with, acceptance. And uh, Summer, listening to you, I think of Lauren. Mm -hmm. I think of the proud moments I had and how fulfilling it was for me as a father. I know your loss is terrible. I know my loss is terrible. John, you know, you know the same thing we're talking about here. So every time I come back uh, to Washington, it's like the scab being removed from a very, very deep wound. And so 
I know when I leave here, I'll be back to try and heal again. But wow, wow, it's unconscionable that we're here. But to the business, look, guys, it's working. It's working. The numbers speak for themselves. Congressional members, do you want to put your name on reversing a positive trend? Do you want to look in the eyes of Scott Maurer, John Kausner, and the families of 3407 and say, we got it wrong when that next plane goes down and you reverse that trend, that's what's going to happen. That's what's going to happen. The RIA and, and the people who have been working on this thing, I don't know, it's maybe the 10th iteration of proposal that they put in front of you. It's kind of like the used car salesman. He keeps painting the car, cleaning it up, redressing it, but it all smells bad, okay? It's a wolf in, in sheep's clothing. It just doesn't work. So don't buy it. Don't buy it. So lastly, as we all know, and you've heard John speak to this, experience matters. I'm not a pilot. I'm not an aviation expert. But there are some people with us today who are. And so let's listen to what they have to say. Jeff Skiles, Tim, would you guys step forward? Uh, my name is Jeff Skiles, and I was uh, Captain Sullenberger's co-pilot on the Miracle on the Hudson. And I think it's important for us to remember how we got to this place that we're at today. Uh, many of you remember that day for us on January 15, 2009. Tragically, though, only three weeks later, Continental 3407 crashed in Buffalo, New York, and caused the tremendous loss for the people around me. But I'd like to look at that uh, a little more closely. Sully and I were very fortunate. Sully is uh, certainly the, the finest airline pilot that I've ever flown with. But we were supported by the finest of training that was available and a safety management system that aided us in being successful in our time of need. None of that was, was offered to the pilots of Continental Flight 30, 3407, and they were just as much victims uh, of the times and of the industry as the people, the loved ones of the people around me. This act was passed to require that kind of training, uh, require that kind of oversight of all airline pilots in this, in this industry and create truly one level of safety. And I think that as people have talked about, the chart behind us shows that. The last fatalities in this country uh, were the 50 people that died on this in this accident. And since then, not one has occurred. Certainly, this is a great success for this industry and for the American people. And this is not the time to revisit it and see if we can water it down and change, change the provisions of it. Certainly, the House Aviation Safety language is the gold standard, as John talked about, uh, for our industry. Thank you. Now, good morning. My name is uh, Tim Canall. I'm the president of the Airline Pilots Association International. And before I begin with a few remarks here, I just want to say something. I have <clears throat> a few hundred landings on aircraft carriers, many of them at night, by myself, in a pitching sea, very aggressive. And I thought I was a, you know, a pretty courageous and ardent person. Summer, you got more guts in your little pinky than I have in my entire body. I'm in awe. Thank you for your words. So it is an honor to join the family and friends of those lost in the tragic Kogan 3407 accident here today. Your courage to turn tragedy into action inspires me and the 57,000 airline pilots I represent. Every pilot is deeply aware of the tremendous responsibility of flying passengers and cargo safely every day across this country and around the world. It's wrong, one reason we're the world's largest non-governmental aviation safety organization. The Colgan family's tenacity, tenacious advocacy, is why the United States has and continues to have unparalleled record in aviation safety. It's because of you, no one else. It's also why both the House and the Senate reauthorization bills, as currently proposed, maintain 
hard-won safety-based training qualification and experience requirements for new airline pilots. We commend Chairman Schuster of the T&I Committee and Ranking Member DeFazio. We also commend Senators Thune and Senator Nelson of the Commerce Committee for not including any rollbacks of these provisions in their base texts. We're going to hold them to that, all of them. Because of the Colgan family's advocacy, your work, along with the collective efforts of my members across the country, members of Congress reject calls, have been rejecting calls to weaken these proven rules by special interests that are willing to put pursuit of a profit ahead of safety. I thank uh, Representative Collins, Higgins, Reed, and Slaughter for being here today and their support. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. In 2010, Congress took bold action. They did. And they put in place safer minimum first officer qualification, training, and experience requirements. In 2013, the FAA responded by establishing the minimum qualification and experience regulations directed by Congress. Since then, there have been no, you've heard it before, I'll say it one more time, there have been no Part 121 airline accidents with passenger fatalities in the United States. Not a one. The before and after of this safety record could not be starker. In the two decades prior to Congress's action, as illustrated on the chart behind me, more than 1,100 people were killed in airline passenger accidents. This is not inclusive of criminal activities such as 9-11. These were accidents. Let me be absolutely clear. The Airline Pilots Association, standing with these families, will not allow safety to be compromised by special interests that place the pursuit of profit over safety. Period. End of story. Alongside with the Colgan families here today, we will fight any attempt, any attempt to weaken these air safety measures in committee on the floor of the House, on the floor of the Senate, and if we get to conference, there too. Together, all of us, and I count, I count myself honored to be in that group, and with the help of those who supported us in the past and the members of Congress here today, we will continue to keep flying safe. The goal, keep flying safe. Thank you all for being here.